There we go. That didn't take too long. First cast, I got bluegills going nuts on the worm, biting the tip. That's usually a pretty good sign and during the post-spawn period. I'll take it <laughs> on the shaky head. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? That's where you wanna hook them. You can see right there with that stand-up shaky head jig, how effective it is at top mouthing them like that. And that's always just a great place to hook a, hook a bass. Quality starter fish. All right. A lot of hype in finesse these days, drop shot, neko rigging, etc. And you know, really neko rigging's gotten wildly popular. We got a ton of good content on wire to fish on the tactic. It catches fish everywhere. Almost all the pros use it on a regular basis throughout the country. But shaky head has been around for a while. It's not quite as sexy, but it's still, you know, as effective as it ever has been. And that's what I'm doing today. We're fishing post-spawn bass. We got a big bed of bluegills up here, side imaged it and just saw these beautiful deep bluegill beds. And those are beds that haven't been, you know, fished that much by guys because they're not visible with the naked eye and unless you're coming out and side imaging, you don't know they're there. But there's bass in and around those bluegill bed. They're done with the spawn and then they're just munching on bluegill. So a stand-up jig head is a really great way to get around those bluegill and coax those bass into biting. I'm fishing a little Mustad stand-up jig head, which happens to work here well when paired with a floating worm. This is a little Z-Man floating worm Z. Really nice finesse tactic. It's a good hooking bait, gets bit a lot, and we're gonna try to catch another one right now. Bluegills there, bass there. Nice. Dunk, 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 dunk. This little bluegill just come and suck on the tip of the worm. That usually perks the bass's interest. And then that happens. Impressive thing with these shaky heads though, a good straight shank hook like this, it's just a really good hooking hook. Actually just boat lift that guy like that. You know, you get a lot of positive leverage with a longer shank like that in their mouth. And then I actually have been pushing that hook through a little bit. So it's just slightly text posed. And with that Z-Man plastic, I'm not messing around retying. I got a screw lock on here and that bait. I mean, you'll catch, you'll cycle through 20, 30 fish. No problem without having to put a new plastic on. So this is a real specific spot. This lake hasn't been mapped in high definition, so it's just real rudimentary mapping. And this structure isn't even on it, this transition from shallow to deep right in front of me. So having a good casting lineup is real important, no different than fishing a crankbait here. The fish are gonna be right on that edge. I can feel that rock down there. So sometimes I'll just give it a little drag. Ooh, that one's a little better. I'll give it a little drag just to kind of feel that bottom composition. And with eight pound braided line, this is suffix 832, in a sensitive rod, it transmits that bottom to your hand beautifully. You can feel everything. We'll just kind of swing him in. This guy's tangled with somebody before. So I got the wind coming from the south right now and this structure lays out up here. So I got my boat positioned, head into the wind. I have spot lock on. So my boat is in moving position. And if you take a look up here at the hummingbird, you'll see a series of waypoints. And what these all represent is a mixture of rock and bluegill beds. You can see here, if I zoom in on that particular waypoint, I have an icon kind of, to me, that denotes a bluegill bed. Right here, you can see there's just a bunch of little dots. So that's a real defined bluegill bed. And I just zoomed off to the side with my side imaging and entered that, but really nice edge of rock right in the edge of the weeds there, spot locked. And I'm just casting right up on that edge and then pulling this shaky head down the, the edge right where the weeds start to taper off and give way to that rock and gravel. And that's where those bluegill like to make their beds. They like to be on firm areas. In the shaky head, fish is clean through scattered grass. And then I'm just working, working it over that rubble down there, that rock, that gravel, and just keep that bait in place and work that rod tip, just kind of bouncing that rod tip. This rod happens to be Megabass's second generation of their Orochi line, and it's called their shaky head rod. So it's a technique specific rod. It's a F3.5 power, which would be equivalent to, you know, your medium light going on medium power. Just really, really sensitive. That's nice when you get all that transmittal from the jig head right up through that braided line, right, right to your hand. Oh. Can hear that drag squealing a little bit. 
And that's good, just a little bit of slippage with this, with this no stretch braid. I got a little stretch on the fluorocarbon business end, but if you do hook a tanker on light spinning tackle, you do want some give. This is a nice reel, this is a Daiwa Luvias, but I mean, yeah, drag's a little loose. But yeah, just real silky smooth drag. You don't need it as much on this guy, but when you hook into that five pounder, a quality spinning reel is a big deal to prevent line breakage. And I've gotten pretty accustomed. I mean, a buddy of mine, Josh Douglas, and guys like Seth Fighter, they'll often fish a 3,000 size spinning reel. And I kind of took their advice on that. You look at that spool diameter, your casting distance is, you know, enhanced. You got an exceptionally smooth drag, a lot of rods like this Megabess Orochi Double X shaky head rod, they balance out really well. And they cast a mile overall, you're just line handling is better with bigger coils. So I've gotten pretty comfortable with that 3000 size spinning reel for a lot of different spinning applications. And then your line pickup's faster too, just based on that spool diameter being bigger. Oh man, got bait fish busting right there and bass bust and shake heads on the bottom. I think we can flip that guy. Shaky heads, <laughs> they catch them all sizes. We're, we're into the little guys today. We got one nice one to kick it off, but hey, it's action, man. And for a lot of people, that's what it's about fishing. You know, get out there, catch a bunch of fish, and this is a really good tool to do that. <laughs> 